Hi guys, welcome to Moose Pantry. A big thank you to everybody who have subscribed to my channel. And today, we'll be making some burgers. Most burger buns are made with vegetable oil because they are cheaper and some are made with butter, but they're more expensive. So in this video, we will compare buns made with vegetable oil versus butter and see if there are differences in appearance, squish factor, texture and taste, and of course, which bun is best for burgers and can hold all that sauce. Alright, let's start. Let's make the bread. Starting off with some warm to touch water that's about 30 to 32 degrees Celsius because we don't want it to be too hot that can kill the yeast. Then I'm gonna add my instant dry yeast and give it a quick mix to let it dissolve. I'm gonna add in my all-purpose flour that has 10 to 12 percent protein and only half of the flour is being added to create an auto lease. Then the auto lease is rested for 40 minutes to one hour. This initiates gluten bonds to form, which reduces your kneading time, and the resting process develops more flavor, which makes your bread more tasty at the end. And 40 minutes later, the autolyse has grown. Now add the remaining flour, the whole milk, granulated sugar, and the salt. Then you just want to mix it. And you'll notice that the autolyse is very stretchy and is also very dry. So we will add an extra 22 grams of water. And it still looks dry but don't worry, we will add an egg. Next, I'm gonna mix all of these ingredients together until it's combined and it can stretch like this. Now the dough is ready for our vegetable oil and our butter. You might notice that the mass of butter and oil are different because butter contains 80% fat and 20% water, whereas oil is 100% fat. So I have to add more butter so that the fat content is equal. Also, make sure that your butter is soft so it's easier to mix with the dough. Here you will notice after adding the vegetable oil, the dough becomes very oily and wet and it seems that it won't mix with the dough properly. But trust me, keep on mixing and you will notice that the dough absorbs the oil and it becomes elastic and stretchy like this. As with the butter, you just want to mix it evenly until it is incorporated into the dough and it can come off easily. Alright, after that's done, place your dough on the table and knead it back and forth. At this stage, the dough is very sticky and you might be tempted to add some flour. But don't do that because it will make the bread harder. Instead, just keep kneading and you'll notice the dough will not be sticky anymore, which means the gluten structure is forming. So just keep on kneading until you feel more resistance and when you pick the dough off the table, it should come off cleanly and easily too. At this point, you just want to slap the dough on the table to make the surface nice and smooth. Now now I'm gonna quickly shape my dough into a round ball. Put it in a grease bowl, dab some water on top, cover it with a damp towel, and let it rest for 10 minutes before the window paint test. I do this by removing a bit of the dough, stretch it gently until you get a thin film that you can see your finger through it. If this film does not break, it means that you kneaded your dough very well and you have a strong gluten structure. Having a strong gluten structure is important so that your dough can hold all the air bubbles produced during fermentation and you'll get a nice fluffy soft bread after baking. Moving on, we will shape our dough again until it's nice and smooth. Put it back in the grease bowl, dab some water on top so it won't be dry, cover it with a warm towel, and then put it in the oven, which I warmed with a pot of boiling water that created some steam. Now, be careful, the steam is very hot and you want to let it air out a bit so you don't kill the yeast during the fermentation process. Alright, gently press down on the dough and portion it to small buns and big buns. And let's round each dough. And if you see an air bubble, just pop it. It's good. Once you're done, put them on a tray, dab some water on top and let them rest for 15 minutes. Next, it's time to round it up again for the last time. Make sure to leave two fingers apart from each dough so that it has space to expand. And I'm gonna let this ferment for 20 minutes in a warm place before baking. 
After the buns have grown twice its size, I'm gonna brush some egg wash on it to give it that nice golden color. Okay, time to bake! This will take about 17 to 21 minutes and I'm saying this because each oven is different. So you want to monitor your breads and make sure that's a nice deep golden brown color before you take it out. And quick tip! To check if your buns are fully baked, you want to tap its bottom and it should sound hollow like this. I bake my bread for 19 minutes and make sure to let it cool on the tray for 5 minutes. Then you want to transfer it to a cooling rack and let it cool for 30 minutes to 1 hour for the bread structure to set and you'll get a fluffy moist bread. Part 2. Let's compare our buns. First, we will compare the appearance. Here I have my two buns and I see something very interesting. If I draw a straight line here, I can see that the vegetable bun is taller compared to the butter bun. Also, the color of these two buns are not very different, but overall, the color of the vegetable oil buns are darker compared to the butter buns. The color of the bottoms are not different at all. They're not oily or soggy. Let's see how squishable these buns are. Okay, so here I want to know whether these buns can spring back up and preserve their height and beautiful dome shape after I squish them. Because I know those breads that just become flat like a deflated tire when I squeeze them. Okay, here we have our two buns and let's see which one can spring back up if I squish it. Oh, I guess this butter bun is a... But I'm gonna give these butter buns another chance. So I'm gonna swap it out with a new one as well as the vegetable oil bun. I'm gonna squeeze it and see if the butter bun is still behaving that way. Wow, both the butter bun and the vegetable oil bun maintain their round dome shape and their height after I squish them three times, meaning both of them pass the squish test. Next up, let's see the texture and taste these burger buns. First, I'm gonna cut them open to see their crumb structure. Overall, the crumb structure of this butter bun looks tight and soft with some evenly sized air pockets here and there. And the crumb structure of the oil bun looks more fluffy and open with bigger air pockets compared to the butter bun. If I fold them like this, both are elastic but the oil oil bun is more foldable compared to the butter bun that is more springy and have more resistance to folding. And if I remove some of the crumb, I can feel that the butter bun is more compact and cohesive compared to the oil bun that feels more fluffy and porous or loose. Which is why you can see here that the butter bun is more dense compared to the oil bun. Alright, enough about crumbs, let's taste them and before that, let's make a burger. Okay, we finally made our burgers and I let them sit out for 20 minutes and let's see if the textures are different and if the buns are soggy. Starting off with the butter buns. Even though it has been sitting out for 20 minutes, the top and bottom buns are definitely not soggy. Let's give this a taste. This burger bun is really good. The patty is nice and moist and the butter bun is soft and buttery and it has a nice bite and chew to it. Overall, the texture stands out from the other burger components. Okay, moving on to the oil bun. This oil bun definitely has a more open crumb structure compared to the butter bun. Even though the bread is very porous, the top and bottom buns are not soggy, even after it has been sitting for 20 minutes. Time to taste it! I really like the soft, fluffy, and airy texture of this oil bun. The bun is not dense, and its texture really blends in with the other burger components, but it is less buttery. So both of these taste good, and it's really hard to choose, but which bun is better for burgers? And the winner is... The vegetable oil bun! For me, the winning factor of this veggie oil bun is its very soft and fluffy texture that just melts together with all the other burger ingredients. And it can hold up a lot of sauce without being soggy. And don't get me wrong, I really like the butter bun too. It's very tasty on its own and it's amazing for garlic breads. But I prefer a softer and fluffier bread for my burgers. So if you're curious which type of bun you would like, give this recipe a try. And if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll I'll see you soon.